Welcome back, everybody, to the XBA 2. We are at the Circuit Center, the Virginia Voltage, hosting the Alabama Red Bellies, and you're back. Yeah, I'm here, and it's Nick Wingate's XBA 2 debut, and this is when you know you've made it. All eyes are on Nick kind of. Wingate, the former national champion on the Kentucky Wildcats team in the XCAA with former teammate Benji Adams, who's now playing with LeBron James. You guys remember Nick Wingate. If you don't, go check out those videos. He was a darn good player in the XCAA tournament. And his first shot as an Alabama Red Belly is going to go a little wide. He doesn't make it. But on defense, yeah. he is all there. A big time block, and he's feeling it. Yeah, looking good here. There's Pierce, the center for Virginia this year. A lot of guys, uh, you're going to see some younger dudes in this episode. There's Akatunde for the Neptunes. He's uh, Neptune's second round draft from pick. Florida. Yeah, I would have missed. missed you know, this is the XBA, too. When you look at minor league baseball, you know, those guys make a lot of errors, yeah. too. College baseball. Don Highland errors. with an assist. Ah, good Looking catch good there. there. Cameron Payne for three. Alabama taking the lead here. I want to see Highland make a shot Ooh. right at the end of the first. Made yeah. a nice spin move, but it didn't amount to anything. There's Owen Glenn. Ah. Now he is with Vir the Fly Guys. Virginia Commonwealth, former product. Yeah. We have Victor Armstrong Jr. out of UNLV. I don't think we've ever seen him before. Stretch. Outside of that exhibition game. There's Pierce with the steal. Great pass. It was an excellent pass. He goes right inside to Preston. Preston with the founders. So guys, it's a close game. Here's Dom Highland with a uh, pretty weak sauce defense right there. Very weak sauce. He's not a defender, he's just a, he's a shooter. I mean, look at the shooter sleeve, man. This is all he does. He, he wants the ball in his hands. He wants the ball in his possession. He's gonna drill a two-pointer. Yeah, it's just shooter. inside the line, but you see it's a pretty close game, guys. Red Belly's voltage. Both teams playing very well, even in the paint area, man. 53%, 52%. It's a high-scoring ball game here so far. A lot of a lot of young talent on the court wow. here tonight. Yeah, a lot of back and forth. There's Preston inside. Gets the foul. Virginia starting to pull away here in the fourth. Here's Pierce looking for somebody. Finds Preston, and they're going to give him three. Not good for Alabama. There's Marco Bellinelli. Man. He's still, he's trying to get back to the league. Yeah. Not sure if he's going to make it at his age. And while he's down here, teach the young guys a thing or two. Nick Wingate going to get to the line here. He's got seven points tonight. He's going to miss the free throw, and he's going to make the second one, so that it would be his eighth point on the night. Nice rebound by Nick oh. Wingate, but he does get the ball blocked, but he's yet again going to get to the line. Gets this one, his ninth point. Looking for double digits. Not going to land here. Maybe he'll get to double digits here late in the fourth quarter. We've got a pretty close game right now, 85-77. to 77, And we have an off-ball foul on Preston Come again. Come so on. Wingate can't oh. drill it. Nobody's around to watch, and he's not going to drill it. Three ball, half-court shot, basically. Not going to land, and the Red Bellies will fall to the voltage 87 to 80, but the Alabama faithful, they love their XBA 2 representative. Now, I was very interested in watching Win... Ni uh, I was going to say Ningate. Ningate. Nick Wingate. Might be a nickname. Yeah, I was very interested in watching him at the free throw line because he's going to be a defender. He's going to be under the rim, so he's got to figure out how to hit those free throws. You know, he's just not good enough in this one. Now, in this game here, we have Tucson versus Salt Lake. So, you guys see the starting lineups there. We're going to have Scalabrini versus Jimmer for that. Should be a good matchup. Uh, we got a lot of custom guys in this one, well, especially for Tucson. Look at those uniforms, man. Look at those Tucson Rumble Squad uniforms. The gradient is killing me right now. Oh, yeah. This is the XBA2, man. This is what we do. Theo Dawkins oh. playing for SoCal. Uh, with Salt Lake, so the good shot there by Dawkins. I mean, he looks pretty good. He looked good in that exhibition game, too, and there's Rennie Ryder. Yeah, here's uh, Dawkins again. I mean, look at this guy. So he was out of Chico State, so he's like a small ball, small school product that is really trying to make a name for himself. I'm rooting for Theo Dawkins. Yeah, there's an easy two there by Selden. Here is Wade Baldwin. Uh, deep three there, rebounded by Ryder. He's so, a good player, man. I, he's a grinder. I love Rennie Ryder. Yeah, he's looking good. Um, there's a deep two right at the half. So Salt Lake 
going into half end with the lead, not very good shooting percentages so far in the first half. But a good rebounding, though, especially. And here's Scalabrini. He's had an okay game, but he can't beat Jimmer Fredette underneath. There's a two for Salt Lake. Yeah, Jimmer Fredette's real good on defense. I don't know how you can how, how can you not beat Jimmer Fredette? Watch out, watch out for Macon. He's he's lighting it up right now. Scalabrini's starting to starting to feel it. There's Macon again from beyond the arc. So Tucson's feeling good. Dawkins deep. Ryder gets a rebound right under Kevin Just Banks. Right on top of Kevin Banks. I mean, is Kevin Banks little midget boy, is he going to do anything under the rim? Probably not. I Why is he even there? I don't I mean, know. Look at Theo Dawkins' size compared <laughs> to... Like, Theo Dawkins is not the biggest guy on the court either, but Kevin Banks, dude, you are Frodo. You do not belong here. Well, look, I know some guys, there's Nowitzki for three. Some guys, you know, average size people get on a court with NBA guys and they look very small. True. But that is not the case with Kevin Banks. He is no. legitimately small. He is a, he's a very small individual. So it's a, yeah. it's a wonder how he's even sticking around here. Yep. Henry Martin underneath gets blocked by Spalding and now Spalding on the other end and Scalabrini gets the rebound. So guys, pretty exciting game here with a minute and a half. Oh, nice pass. Good throw into Macon, but he can't make that. He's making all these threes, but he can't score <laughs> right underneath the basket. Macon can't make in the shot but tucson gets another opportunity this time scalabrini wow two gets the green also so it was just a contested shot oh. a good defense by bender with the huge block now here comes scalabrini he's gonna challenge the defender gets the green to go off the backboard whoever thought we would see bender versus jimmer Fredette? And it's high stakes <laughs> in the XBA. Whoever thought. It's a tie ball oh, game, guys, no. and a steal here for the Shaker. Shakers. Oh, going for it with the and one. That's going to be Simmons. And the foul against Scalabrini. Simmons will make the and one. So Salt Lake down by, or up by three. And a deep shot again that's making, but they're going to give him two. So he does not get his feet beyond the arc, and Scalabrini's gonna follow Jimmer. So Jimmer trying to clutch up here, and it looks like he will. Not a guy you wanna send to the line for sure, but that's part of the game plan why they wanted him there. Nine seconds left, guys, down, down to six seconds. You gotta set up something for Scalabrini with the three. Got it. For the tie. It's 76, 76, guys, with 3.6 seconds. Timeout called by the Shakers, and they got basically one more shot it's here. Jimmer time. In the corner, Jimmer. He got it. Jimmer. Jimmer, the hero for Utah. Salt Lake City gets the W. Wow. So great W here by the Salt Lake City Shakers. Look at that. All those fans out there. They've got more support here in the XBA, too, than the XBA teams. Well, you know, maybe Utah needed an XBA team. Maybe that was my bad, you know? I mean, the fan support for the Shakers is very strong. And obviously, Jimmer. Jimmer sells tickets. Wow. So, guys, we see the numbers there. Dawkins had a very good game. Uh, Marcus Smith, I didn't get a lot of highlights from him there. Scalabrini was the leading scorer for Tucson. Um, I mean, Nowitzki Jimmer. did okay. So, Nowitzki was all right in this one, too. We saw Henry Martin, one for seven. So, that, that kind of hurt him a little bit. And then we had Banks and Curtis uh, did not uh, convert any shots in this one. So, guys, now we see Boise versus Memphis in this one. We're going to have some guys like Omar Jaconde making his XBA2 debut. Uh, he spent all year, his rookie year, with Alaska. And now with Apollo Steele being drafted, they are going to send him down to Boise to get some tutelage and some seasoning and i think yeah. it's gonna pay off need some marination down there in xba too get a nice little bump when you're ready and so far so good for jaconde yeah, he's flying around playing good defense there's pat Connaughton saying why am i here san francisco or california what am i doing here there's jaconde all right nice moves. he's a big dude he's hard to handle yeah. down there so good uh, good play good decision to take that shot up, and here's a two-ball shot. Good. That's Azari Woods. So Ooh. Memphis has Woods and Pavard down there for Along Atlanta. Uriah Cassell. So they got a few of our custom guys as well. You know, I'm actually surprised. You know, when creating Memphis, the white numbers with blue outline. I don't. I have no idea why I did that. Looking back on this, I, I you think did that with Washington. So I, I, don't, I don't. I don't know why I did that. I think I'm gonna have to. I had a creative lapse. Yeah. So I'm gonna go back and change it. Mark Knott with 11 points in that first half. And speaking of Mark Knott with the Alaska chill. Boom. Looking good. He's looking all right in this one. 
might need a call up eventually. I don't know if he keeps playing as well as he has been. Zari Woods here for two more points and a nice move in the lane. Trey Burke, nice move, baby. He's gonna do it again though. This Good is basically point. the Dragon's bench has now been relegated to XBA2. Here's Pavard underneath and Jaconde uh, schooled him and oh. then he steals it and then he just shoots it. <laughs> he shoots and fires a three. Didn't even try to reset the offense here and it's gonna turn into two more points for Boise. I don't know how I feel about that sequence of plays. I don't know whether to, you know, give Pavard props here because he's starting to miss shots. Like, yeah, he's showing some there muscle here. He gets to the line. That's a very big uh, foul to, to draw there. But 86-82 could have been 83. Give the team another chance. But that's going to do it. So Boise takes care of Memphis here on the road. And I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to feel about that sequence. I mean, you got to give the guy some props. The young, the young cat. You know, the hustle. Yeah. Um, we didn't really see Alexopoulos or whatever his name was. The Greek. The yeah. mini Greek freak. That's, yep. We didn't really see him do much there. Pavard had 12 rebounds in this one. Jones was really good. Um, you know, I'm looking at the top score was Trey Burke and not was the mm -hmm. number two score. I, I was interested in Jaconde, seven rebounds in this one. I think Jaconde could be a factor, especially if Alaska has an injury at center. I think Jaconda can step up right away. They're play. not super deep at center, so that could be definitely an option. Yes, they took a pile of steel to extend that depth out, but yeah, you're right. I mean, an injury at that position, easily call the guy up. Yeah. Uh, now, this game here, Central Cal United versus Ottawa. We got Paxton Holmes. We got Jack Caponin. And we got a few more guys in here as well. Fleck is playing for Central Cal. Not a lot of guys here that are in the starting lineup, I noticed yeah. when I took a look there real quick. It's but Luke uh, Austin, Luke Austin right? from Harvard, who actually really played really well for Harvard in the XCAA tournament here, here. And we have a foul underneath the buckets. That's Fleck with a foul component at the line. Ah, doink. Don't. Yeah, I mean this this is why that they're down there, guys. They're just um they gotta convert their shots. And the, the more that you can convert those shots the more likely you are going to be called up because yeah. they need to rely on you when oh. the ball is in your hands. But we got a block here. Capone with the block. I like to see it. So Jack, Jack, he's stepping up here so far tonight. Yeah, like to, would have liked to see the free throws go down, but hey, I mean, right. beggars can't be choosers here. So There's Grayson Allen, former Boston Pilgrim, now relegated Ooh. to XBA to Ottawa. But I think Fleck is looking pretty good in this one. He's looking wet. What does that mean? What do you mean, man? What do you mean, what does it mean? I've never heard of that. You never heard of wet? No. I'll just leave it to the comment section. They know. They you know tell me what that means, because I don't know what that means. You want to know what it means? Nope. It's basically automatic. Okay. When a shot goes up, it's just wet. That's Are wet. Are you just making that up? No, it's like... I would have no way of telling. It's like splash. Daquan Bowers, rebound. It's going to go to Abrinas. See if he's got a look here. I think he's got it. you got to look, man. Nope, no dice. Rebound. Going the other way. Wennington for two. Wennington was a second round pick, and he's actually turning out to be pretty good. The second year in the league. He got a steal here, getting out it out to Fleck. Is he gonna give it off? Nope, he's gonna take it anyway. I'm I'm telling you what, man. I'm telling you what. Fleck looks smooth. Yeah, he does. He looked he's carrying over what he did at Michigan. He's looking pretty darn good. There's Paxton Holmes for two, and again, almost a repeat. Same play, this time. He gets chopped down by Jalen Noel. So, take another look here. Looking sharp for Holmes. <laughs> There's a two ball, no good. Holmes with the rebound. So, Holmes took over. He's a, he's a hustle player that I'm, I'm yeah. seeing here. So, maybe, um, you know, if, if his team that he was drafted by, or not drafted by, but uh, selected, signed with, Should be San Jose. doesn't like him, maybe the arrows might... Uh, Try to yeah. snipe them away. Hey, look on the bottom line. XBA3 Nebraska upsets San Antonio. Oh. Uh -oh. Now, XBA3, guys, is looking a lot better. And we're going to actually see an XBA3 game here at the very end. And we got some fun news regarding XBA3. So, guys, uh, good win there for Central Cal. This one we are going to see EJ Sanders versus Dre Merrick versus Danny Fratello versus Vinny Red Jones. Look at that EJ Sanders, baby, starting point guard. Dre Merrick, actually the starting, is that uh, small forward? Yeah, small forward. And there's a steal right now. And a nice dish there to Isaiah Cannon. So From Merrick, by the way. So yeah. here's Merrick actually backing down his man, and he's going to fire up this two, gets the green. So Dre Merrick from Miami may not have shown out as much as he wanted to down in the X, or XCAA 
but he's pretty he's showing some pretty good moves here so far in XBA2. Here's EJ Sanders with the steal, working it all the way down to get the two, and then EJ again firing up this shot. Nice pass from EJ Sanders in the corner to Dozier, hitting the three ball. Guys, uh, is EJ Sanders ready for the call up after after this action that we're seeing? Is Jess Moore gonna get blocked by the way by Garena? But what do you think? What do you think there, brother? Do you um, think EJ is ready for the big time? Depends on how desperate you are at point guard. You know, you got you drafted Buddy Mayer, so it's going to be a fun battle there at point guard in the near future for St. Louis. Yeah, we'll find out. There's a nice shot there for Albuquerque. So, guys, Oklahoma City goes into the half with the lead. Dre Merrick, one of your leading performers for the Venom. So, he, you know, Merrick, I know he thinks he belongs in El Paso. He, he, and he knows he belongs in El Paso. I mean, he was a second-round pick, so he's going to have to earn it. But I think he is on track. I think he's on the right track. The more, the, the more that you can prove in the XBA 2, which you've got a lot of good players down there, a lot of gut, good competition, the more you can prove down there, definitely going to earn that shot and that call-up eventually. But here's a deep three. That's actually going to land. It's going to hit. I think that was Jess Moore. Here's Burns. Charles Burns. You guys remember him? Chuck. Second year pro there from Missouri. And again, driving into the lane there. Oh, Sanders. Nice Sanders, baby. Let's go, EJ. He's, he's looking good, man. I, gotta, I have to say. In Yanti Martin. I think I said that right. Uh, it's score. Guys, Oklahoma City wins mm -hmm. this one. Albuquerque. I tell you what. Off the slow start. I'm really excited for these young players. Like, I, I get it, though. It is XBA 2 competition. It's not bad competition, but it is not the pro-level competition. But I'm excited for these young guys, man. You got Sanders. You got Merrick, who had a good game. You had uh, Calvin Klein. I saw one highlight from Klein. Wingate had a pretty solid debut as well. So there's some good players down here yeah. at XBA2. I'm, I'm excited for it. The Orlando Voyagers center, Dwight Howard. <laughs> he's a 74 overall, and Tampa Bay said, uh, we don't wow. need you up here. So well, he's stay, just... stay toasty down there in XBA2. And Dwight Howard is a man amongst boys here so far in the early game. Yeah, he might be an XBA2 all-star by the yeah, end of this if he doesn't end up getting a call. He's still there. Yeah, and Ty's Knight is getting way more playing time here with Orlando than he got last season in the big leagues. So there's Dwight Howard again. He's Howard, saying, he's yeah. saying, get me out of here. He's saying, I'm going to help out my boy, Tyus Knight. <laughs> Here's uh, Welsh. We're both Vincey on Tampa Welsh. Bay's team together. But yeah, Welsh, Quint no Quincy good. Welsh uh, from, with the from Oregon. And then, yeah, Koontz from North Florida. The Ospreys yeah. made a kind of a deeper run. Cinderella type of team there in the XCA. Yep. And we do have the rosters for you guys in the description below so you guys can see who belongs where. And there is Jaquan Terry Feather. A player I liked. I like Terry Feather. I hope he does well. He's, does, he's not rated very highly right now, but uh, he'll get there. I think he'll get there. He's got that dog mentality. Dwight Howard here with a block. And Dio Kioya with a shot. No good, but Terry Feather's got a shot here to take it all the way. A nice Ooh, pass. Nice. To Brewer underneath the bucket. It's Corey Brewer, the veteran. And then we've got Martin here for two. You know, Terry Feather's got some wingspan, man. He I'll does. And then Tyus Knight's got some elevation. Dwight Howard with a turnaround. Wow. He's like, yeah, you like that, Tampa? Get me out of here. <laughs> 42 to 28. So the Voyagers are knocking the socks off of the action right now. So they're getting a lot of the action from the Voyagers for sure. It's not looking good. Howard... Beats Koontz for the rebound. Kiyoya is not having a very good game so far. A lot of a lot of shots that we're seeing so far in this highlight reel he has missed. We'll have to take a look at the box score at the very end of the game to see what his uh, percentage is. But right now, I haven't seen too much out of Kiyoya. I mean, good defender so far right now. Uh, this ball is going to get shot. No good, but good uh, good defense by the action. Now we got Kiyoya here giving it off to Danny Gold and North Carolina product. He's going to get the foul here, and then we give it off to Green for a three. The action are starting to come back just a little bit, but 55 to 41. That's uh, Dio Kioya there for the foul. I believe he gets the two. Terry Feather. Terry Feather's looking good. I mean, he's got, look at him. He's got, <laughs> thanks, man. He says, thanks, man. Thanks for holding me up. Might be a good pick for Tampa Bay. I think so. They've had a really good draft. If that's the case, they had a really good draft. Getting Terry Feather. 
getting Kennedy Alvarez. It's, I mean, Coons for three. Hey, Coons. I mean, holy cow. This guy, this guy pretty much, I mean, he impressed me. He was a main reason why the North Florida Ospreys had a good run there last season. But we got a two ball shot good. 73 to 59. And we've got more points for the Voyagers here. And it wasn't even close. A 12 point win, 80 to 68. The Atlantic City action will fall. Big time. Yep. Don't bet on him. That was kind of a bad game overall. Duvall was the leading scorer there. I saw Walter and Lemon Jr. did a couple of good things. Um, Kyoya was, I'd say, 0 for 3. Yeah, Kuntz had the one main bucket. Tyus Knight was your leading scorer for Orlando. Howard had 10 rebounds. Obviously, limited playing time. They spread the love around. Terry Feather only had four points, so we saw his two shots. So yeah, I got to well, give him credit there. Got to give him props. San Antonio at Fort Wayne. I see Ethan Bolts in the starting lineup. Trevor Kelly in the starting lineup as well. Yes. Trevor Kelly, one of my favorite point guards from Adeline Christian. So I'm excited to see what he does here for the River Cats. Of course, the River Cats, as you know, lost to an XBA 3 squad. So we'll see how they do here. They're currently down 4 to nothing. Make it 6 after this slam dunk here to Fort Wayne. Humphreys for 2. Man, it's just 29-7. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's not looking too good, man. And here, Here's Lebowski from Kansas. He's going to take the shot good. That, I mean, that's a good timing shot for him. I mean, he knew he had, he had a step on the defender. He had his move, his uh, his setup. It was, it was a nice move. It was a nice, yeah. nice, uh, nice shot there. Lebowski's going to be a pretty good player. I like Lebowski. He's looking like he's getting his feet wet there. Bettis with the hook shot. Freeman with the rebound. Freeman again with the rebound. Um, so nothing good there for Bettis inside. And there's Marcus Keane with a three ball. So 37 to 11 right now. Yeah. Victor Claver slams it down. Ninjas are taking it to him, man. Yep. That's Justin Wright Foreman, who had progressed quite a bit from last year. He's a 76 overall now. So he might get the call up for Houston. But Jeez. they're getting destroyed right now. 30% from the field. The, the one highlight in that was Trevor Kelly with two points. They highlighted a guy with two points. That's just how bad... <laughs> The River Cats are playing here tonight. Yeah, they give up really a foul bad. here, get the free throw, and then they've got more points in the paint. Freeman, Javari Freeman was playing good there. There's Bettis inside, finally gets one to drop over Bolt and Kelly underneath. Finally, Kelly gets on the board. But defensively, we'll see what he's got here, and he gives up a foul plus the plus the two, so he gets the and one. Oh, Guys, 90. That was uh, Ernest Dunn beat Fabian Verber inside. Very Michael Jordan-like. Uh, <laughs> yes, me. <laughs> it's, a, it's a running meme, guys, if you guys are new here. Ernest Dunn was a player from Dayton, and he was been, yeah. he was really bad. There he's, he is. He's really bad, and he's, uh, he's taking year? the next step in his second year, something that we've seen a lot of with these XBA players, with these prospects. So may, maybe, maybe Ernest Dunn is going to be Michael Jordan. We shall see. I mean, he's got gonna, he's got at least this year left to go uh, for Fort Wayne. I don't think he's going to get called up anytime soon. But three for seven for seven. Marquise so. Diamond was also playing in this one. Lebowski led the way with 18 points tonight. Yeah, pretty good. Um, good shooter. Good effort by him, but. Uh, as a team, they did not do too hot tonight. So we have Cincinnati at Iowa. We got Quinn Cook versus J.R. Smith versus Tony Bradley. Well, we'll see what happens here if uh, J.R. Smith is remembering the score. I mean, uh, there's nothing to play for for him down at XBA, too. He's just kind of biding his time, collecting the paycheck. We'll just yep. see how it all goes. Um, Here's Max Swain inside. Just remember the, remember the score. Please. Kicks out to Ammon Tucker. Tucker with three. There's... John Michael Rennick underneath with this little dog. God, this game has got a lot of prospects, guys. Yes, it does. A lot of prospects to watch out. Banks at center gets the foul for Iowa. So Banks play, playing for Chicago. And Ammon Tucker, I'm interested to see what he's... I mean, he's a big dude. He's... he's uh, Yeah, he's uh, he's very, very good. He's a very good player. He came up clutch a lot uh, at uh, Oklahoma. So good player. We'll see what happens. Pluto Van Prado. Drafted by Kentucky. Most people were thinking he's going to be a bust, but he actually had a good play here, and he fires up a three ball that almost went in. I mean, the big man's got a three ball shot, it looks like. We, we didn't see that a whole lot 
in Notre Dame, or at Notre Dame, I should say. Swain here down low. He's going to get the two. He's going to get this blocked, but tries to pick it up. It's going to still be the Chili Dogs ball as we get a little mini celebration for, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> he was very happy. He was very happy that he uh, blocked the shots, I guess. But they get the ball back, dude, and they get two. So. Well, we have Brad Wanamaker down here in XBA, too. So, you know, if Kentucky needs a three-point threat, if they got to call him up during the season, yeah. I mean, Wanamaker's a pro veteran, so that'd be a good addition there. Inside, there's a big-time block. And then a three ball. It's Gerald Green trying to get back. With Chicago, Poitras inside. So guys, this one's coming coming down to the wire. But it looks like the Chili Dogs are pulling away here. They are going to win by eight. It looks yeah, like. Fra uh, Frazier with that too. He's feeling a little bit slighted. If I'm Frazier, I'm feeling a little bit slighted. I was a valuable member of that championship team for XBA2, and I did not even sniff a shot at that Kentucky lineup. Or yeah, who is he? Columbus. Columbus. Columbus lineup, yeah. Well, you know, Columbus he's, in Kentucky uh, owning the yeah. Cincinnati Chili Dogs. Yeah, he scored 28 in this game. So. I'm, 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 I'm saying, like, he needs to be considered. Yeah. Now, what is this? XBA Arkansas versus XBA New York. So you guys <laughs> see some of these guys here. It's George King at point guard. We got, uh, I know, Drew the second. We got T-Rex. We got Brownie Baker, Eli Hepner in this one. So guys, uh, this is our first look here at XBA3. So there was some rumors that XBA3 wasn't really a thing, right? Oh, so no, it's, no, it's a thing now. It's a thing now that we've got a ton of these prospects. We got to have a home for them, guys. We can't do your custom prospects dirty like that. I mean, look at Roy Hibbert's down here making plays in XBA3. So. This will be kind of a regular thing for XBA2 updates. We will we'll give you guys XBA3 updates as well. So as we see the gameplay here, they get a feel for some of these some of these players here. They've been familiar familiarized with these names like Brownie Baker from Ohio State. Yeah. How does the XBA3 work? Where do these players go? Well, all these players are technically free agents, so they are playing at this level to get experience. They do match up against XBA2 teams. Uh, and at the end of the year, they will be free to sign with any pro team, any pro XBA team. So, and then hopefully they're going to get assigned to an XBA2 team. So that makes any sense. So if Brownie Baker is lighting it up and the Washington Founders want him, they can sign him next year, assign him to Virginia Voltage, for instance. Right. So think of it kind of like a pipeline system. So you got yeah. your XBA pros that will eventually retire. You've got the XBA draft, right? And where guys fall in the draft depends on where they go, right? They can either be a bench guy at the XBA Pro level or they'll be sent down to XBA 2. Undrafted free agents will go to XBA 2. We might have some retirings inside XBA 2 as well. XBA 3 is there as like the pipeline system. So it's like a G League to the G League. Yeah. so to speak and i think these guys will progress so you guys know our, our progression sliders are higher in xpa2 so you know they might be a 62 they might be a 58 might be a 60 right now but with a couple years time they might even make it their xpa debut so that's kind of the idea and hopefully we get to see these guys progress and you know with this influx of all this youth and all this young talent in xpa3 i'm actually seeing a lot of nifty plays here on offense a lot of good defense as well but hey i mean 70, 73 to 66, it's it's scoring more like a college all-star game type of deal. So we got a lot of good players here that were undrafted that just didn't get a chance, like D-Lo Waller's making good plays. I saw Eddie Lack from yep. – uh, Eddie Lack might be a um, – Xavier uh, a, Lack. A, a goalie for uh, – Xavier Lack. Z Xavier Lack, yeah. So Xavier Lack from Cincinnati. So he's uh, he made some nice plays as well. He got King down low here making some moves. I don't know, man. I, I like the way that XBA3 is playing yep. here, at least in this matchup. Well, Roy Hibbert gets the best of, of the XBA Arkansas, XBA3 Arkansas. You know, Roy Hibbert's like the first boss in a video game. So all the players on <laughs> XBA3, you get paired up against Roy Hibbert. You hit him three times and he dies. Yep. And they failed. So they got to restart the game, go back, work on some things, and eventually you work your way up to like Andre Drummond. Yeah. Right? I, I think so. I would, I would equate that to that. Yeah, for sure. 
All right, so let's, let's, your box scores up there too. Yeah, let's check out the standings here through January 1st. So guys, we caught up with the regular XBA program here, Oklahoma City in first. Heck so yeah, baby. They're looking pretty good. I see San Antonio rebounding, getting up there with seven wins in a row. Tucson a little disappointing. I felt Tucson had one of the best teams. Memphis has won 12 in a row. Albuquerque 20 and 15. They've got a couple losses to XBA three teams on the resume. Albuquerque is struggling right now. And so is XBA. You want, you want to talk about struggling? Talk about the two and 29 team. Yikes. So uh, we'll give you guys an update on XBA three normally with all these XBA2 updates. So let's take a look at the Eastern Conference. We got the Alabama Red Bellies at 25 and seven. You notice the trend here? Alabama being part of Jacksonville, Oklahoma City being part of St. Louis. They're looking good. Yeah. Atlantic City, no surprise for me in last place. Ottawa not doing too hot either. Ottawa's lost twice already to XBA3 squads. So a little dicey, a little dicey right now for Ottawa and Atlantic City. Brownie Baker is leading the combined XBA2, XBA3 in points per game. So pretty good there. Theo Dawkins is third. Trey Merrick. Merrick fourth. So Merrick is looking like he wants that yeah. promotion. Yeah, he looks like he might be a guy that belongs. We got Raheem Akusi from North Carolina, Jalen Jones, Antonio Blakeney, a guy that might belong at the big level. We got Trevon Duvall, Frazier, a couple guys that we've mentioned before that might deserve a call up here soon. Yeah. Troy Williams scoring a bunch at 13.8. Jesse George, John Michael Remick, Thanos O'Neal at point guard. Then EJ is up there too. Um, top 20 player, Trevor Kelly. He's getting 10 rebounds a game. I don't know how, I don't know why oh, Trevor that's Kelly. Case. Yeah, but Trevor Kelly is like attacking the rim as a point guard. That's what he does. That's what he does. He might be getting his own rebounds. <laughs> that could be it too. Uh, there's Ethan Bolts with 12.7. So, I mean, the minutes are so spread around. Um, guys on XBA3, though, are probably going to get a few more minutes than the XBA2 guys. So, it's like Scamacci is going to get a lot. He's uh, he's averaging a double-double for Ralph Scamacci. All right. Yeah. Well, he was really good at Indiana. Yeah. Daniel Stenmark is playing pretty good. He might be the one player that I think is kind of a kind of being snubbed a little bit okay. he needs to he needs to be an xba2 xba2 okay well we'll see if he gets that chance um portland boban marjanovic is second now portland and hartford i had a game simulator for them they were actually the tip-off game for xba2 season and i lost the file so i do not have portland so we missed botwinski's debut well believe me and believe sejan me. walker believe me it is uh it's okay it's just xba2 updates <laughs> it's all right we're well, gonna I, live i wanted the fans to know because we had every team except for those two the kids will live man the yeah, kids okay. will live they'll be all right cody bogdanovich getting a lot of boards there as well so you guys see a couple of the guys the xba3 names hopefully you recognize a few of them uh, Hepner, Preston Kinney. Hepner's averaging a double-double as well. Yeah, looking pretty good. Um, and Trevor Kelly, the point guard. Yeah, double-double. Crazy. So what is his, his uh, defensive rebounds per game? He's got six defensive rebounds and three offensive rebounds. So I was wrong. I thought it was offensive. No, it's defensive for the majority. That's encouraging. Yeah, I think plays good D. Uh, Daquan Bowers. Uh, hopefully, he'll get his chance to debut with Boston. We did haven't we, seen him yet. Did we see EJ up here at the? Uh, there he is, top eleven. He's just outside of Trey Burke. He's tied with Trey Burke at three point nine. You know, like I said, a lot of that is based on the minutes. So sometimes, like if guys played the entire game, like starter minutes, maybe they might be up there. There's Terry Feather, eighteenth in assists. Ethan Parker from Nebraska, not getting a whole lot of love as a sixty-one overall, but he's he's playing. He's playing well. He's putting up numbers. Is Zhao Key gonna make El Paso? The guy's a seventy-six. It looked like. I think he does. I think he deserves consideration for an injury for sure. Yep. So guys looking good there. All the big men, the blocks. Eli Hepner up there. That's encouraging as a small forward. He's looking good. I saw Miles McCarthy as well. Uh, three point percentage. Brownie Baker. I think Baker has played himself onto an XBA2 squad. There's no doubt about that. You would think so. He will be up there next year. EJ Sanders at 45% three ball percentage. It's a very good number, guys. Call so, Mano. I think we might have to take a look at the XBA2 All-Star race here for the Western and the Eastern. You got Pau Gasol, captain of the West, and Dwight Howard, captain of the East. Notable names here as far as custom prospects go would be Nick Wingate hey. down there for the Eastern Conference. 
Uh, keeping with the East, you've got Melvin Frazier, not a custom prospect. So the only custom on the East side would be Nick Wingate. As far as the West goes, custom prospects, Trevor Kelly, EJ Sanders, Scalabrini. So you got a three ball, you got a three ball um, group there. Backcourt, yeah. So it's uh, really nice to see those guys ball on their way to a XBA2 All-Star appearance. I hope that they get there. And that is it for our All-Star race. I want to see the XBA2 All-Star team, both conferences, take on an XBA team and oh. see who would win. Uh, XBA... Take on the Washington Founders, the okay. worst team. All right. Would you guys want to see that? Just as a little fun little mini little live stream. Not canon. It wouldn't be canon, but maybe. Maybe you might throw it in there if you guys are for it. Or, or are... maybe even an XBA3 All-Star team takes on Washington. That would, be <laughs> that would be funny. Well, it would only be funny if they win, if they somehow pull off an upset. If not, they're going to get blown out like 120 to 60. Okay, Brownie Baker, Eli Hefner, Stenmark, who are a couple of the other guys that were killing it? Scalabrini. Scala well, I'm trying to think XB3 only. Yeah, he is. He's XB3. Oh, uh, what did I say? Scalabrini. Oh, Scumachi. Scumachi. Okay. That's what I meant. Yeah, um, that would be fun. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, let us know, guys. If you guys are still watching this, let us know. We're all ears on the matter. But guys, that is actually going to be it for the XBA 2 update, guys. Next time we see you will be XBA week number five. We got quite the slew of games here for you guys in that episode. So make sure you are making your picks below for the XBA Week 5 contest which again is your chance to win at custom prospects. It's really the only way that you can win prospects. Uh, we do do an open submission form at the very beginning of each and every season, but obviously with the 1000s of submissions, there's no guarantee. The only way that you can guarantee your shot is to play for a prospect, compete for a prospect, put the prospect in your own hand, so to speak. We also run a college bracket challenge as well. We do random giveaways at times. So when I said that this is the only way, it's kind of true. It's semi-true. You want to put the chance in your hands, basically. Don't leave it up to us to choose at random. Don't let the universe decide. Let you decide how it's going to go. So guys, what do you think about the XBA2 update? What are some takeaways that you have? Of course, let us know about that Washington Founders game against uh, XBA two all-stars but who needs to get called up yeah who, who should be called that's up? what i'm saying like uh what do you what do you think what do you think who, who stood out what players stood out what if you guys want to check the rosters just to get refreshed we have the google sheets form in there you guys can see all of the xp2 rosters you can see the xp3 rosters you can find out where your guy is if your guy didn't get drafted he's an xpa3 and we'll follow his career through these updates and hopefully one day he will make his XBA debut. One day, one day, that one shining moment. Yes. He'll get there. He will get one free throw point. And, and then, then he'll and then it'll be done. And then I'll retire. And, and he'll go done. play basketball in China. Yep. Or uh Turkey or Israel or something. Yeah, and then he'll just come back. And then yeah, and he'll live his, just live his life over. He'll run a little AAU camp and uh be an accountant and he will be 48 years old with three kids and he will retire he'll be a very happy man and you'll run into him at the kroger or the grocery store and say weren't you at the in walmart the XBA? i remember you you were in the xba too it's a great life i have your rookie card <laughs> will you sign it for me please this is gonna be worth thousands of dollars. I bought your rookie card at a garage sale for five cents. <laughs> uh, I saw your banner up on the rafters at Salt Lake City Stadium. It's Shaker Stadium. All right, we're having too much fun with this. Guys, we'll talk about this a little later. Leave a like if you like this thing. We will see you guys for XBA week number five. Remember, make your picks in the pinned comments below. We'll see you guys in the next one. Leave a like if you like this thing. As always, thank you for watching and uh, peace.